However, guys, if you get it in the card holder, so the envelope card holder with the GDP grain, after maybe like a year or so, this is going to start getting pretty sticky. Magnet on the Nikki bag is extremely strong. So strong that like when you rip it, or, like open it, it feels like you're going to rip the bag. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. I'm going to be doing my 5k giveaway video this weekend guys, so I will be announcing the winners of my 5k giveaway. Thanks so much guys for helping me get to 5,000 subscribers, it is really awesome. Let's try and get to 10k! <laughs> anyway guys, I had a few questions on my last Celerot video about Celerot bags I'd had in the past. I did reveal that I used to work as Celerot and a few of you guys were wondering what Celerant bags I used to own and what my opinions are on Celerant. So today I thought I'd talk about the bags that I used to have and common customer complaints or things I'd noticed about certain styles from Celerant. So I've owned quite a few. I had a micro college bag, which was really cute. I've had a seasonal bucket bag. I've had a, in a, like a tapestry print. So it was like in this kind of print, um, which I got from a staff sale. A, I had a Toy Lulu, I've owned it twice in a metallic and I had a Sherling one. I had a Bell Chase bag, which is a discontinued style, it was like this red little boxy briefcase bag. Not very popular, but I loved it. I think I just liked the understated look of it, but I found that to be quite heavy and clunky. Had the Sac de Jour, oh, what else have I had? I think I've had some wallet on chains, but I, I don't, just don't like the wallet on chain guys. After I left Celeron, I sold all my Celeron bags and I had a lot of Gucci bags as well because I was saving to buy a Chanel bag and, and yeah, and I bought Chanel bags. So, and I mean, at the moment, guys, I've been selling Chanel bags and then I bought a Birkin. For me, I'm not that sentimental with handbags. Um, you know, life is too short, guys. Like, if you have stuff sitting there that you're just not... If you want something else and then you've got stuff sitting there that you can get money from, I say sell it, guys. Like... I'm not, I don't know, I just don't like holding onto stuff for the rest of my life. Like, the past has happened. I used to work at Celeron, I don't work there anymore. The future is where I want to go. Like, I don't want to go back to the past. So, I was okay to let go of some of those Celeron bags. I did hold on to the Sac de Jour because I still actually love this bag. Now, when I bought this, there was a soft option, so a softer leather, which was really kind of nice for day to day. And there was this more structured option in the croc embossed and I ended up going for the more structured one which I guess is like comparable to say like a Celia Kelly or something um but there was a softer one which yeah it was a bit more like you know a retourne Kelly or you know you know what I mean guys so it was a bit softer I was going to go for the softer one but I did notice that on the soft sac de jours guys so the bigger ones they tend to like mushroom out over a really long uh, period of time and they start looking quite ugly so I would say if you're going to get a bigger sac de jour the soft one is quite comfortable for traveling but if you go for a more structured one they really do hold the shape and they look really nice over time. A Lou camera bag so this was probably the hottest bag when I worked there we sold so many of these they were always selling out if you go for the full lambskin version which I don't know if they do that anymore that wears out so fast guys like we would always get people coming back and complaining like all the corners would be all worn after a few years or so um I think there used to be one with no hardware on it that one yeah it wears out so fast so I wouldn't advise to get that one I definitely go for the one with the quilting and the hardware now with the black hardware one the black hardware can chip over time that is something I would always tell customers because we would get complaints from people saying that the hardware is all chipped and that goes for a lot of brands I know um even uh, Chanel, sometimes their black hardware can chip. It just depends on, like, I guess how they did it. They've not actually made the pigment go through the metal. They've literally just coated it with some black paint or something. So that can chip off. The camera bag, definitely a good entry-level bag and something you would wear for day-to-day -day because it's just, like, a comfortable strap. And I think if you are, like... Maybe like, you know, a mum on the go or a very casual person, this would be a really good bag to go for in the quilted version. So I would say, yeah, it depends on like what you want it for. If you want like a really casual bag for me, I just hated it because I just saw it too much and I just 
was over it. And sometimes when you work somewhere, guys, and you see too much, you, it actually turns you off the product. Not always. Like, there was a lot that I loved from Celeron, but this was one of those bags that I just didn't, I just never liked it. So, Lou Camera Bag, I don't personally love, but I see why you would like it. Um, next, guys, the Kate Bag. So, the Kate Bag is pretty classic for Celeron. It's um it's something else that I had never actually purchased myself and the reason for that is is that it is very evening. So it's a very boxy shape. To me it looks like an evening clutch and I'm not somebody who goes out to like cocktail parties and you know black tie events every day. I mean, actually, I went to a black tie uh, wedding the other day, but, um, oh, actually, maybe I'll show you guys my outfit. It was pretty cute. <laughs> and, uh, well, I don't know. This is a very dressy bag, but people would often buy it and wear it very casually. And I understand that people kind of do that with, like, the Chanel Classic flap and Chanel bags as well. But for me, the Kate bag is so kind of minimal. It just looks so evening. And so... I never bought it because I just thought it just looks like strictly like an evening bag. Not only that, guys, but the chain on it is very uncomfortable. It's just like a full gold chain. And sometimes when you buy, like, the Chanel 2.55 chain, so something like this, it's actually, for some reason, the way they've done it, it's very comfortable to wear. It doesn't hurt your shoulder. But the cape bag is actually, I got so many people complaining about it saying oh it's, it's injured me it's given me like shoulder pain and I'm like well it's just a design yeah guys so that's something to know with the cape bag I wouldn't use it as like an everyday bag it doesn't fit very much at all because the gussets it so it looks long but actually the gussets at the side so like the bit that goes in occupies a lot of space so I would often get people trying to shove their massive wallet in there and it's just not going to work out so if you do like the look of the cape bag I, I know they did bring out like a reversible cape bag at one stage which was softer maybe go for that because at least that could be more of a casual version for you but envelope bag now the envelope bag commonly comes in the GDP grain leather which is the Grand de Pude grain so a lot of people would call it caviar grain it is comparable to chanel caviar but this is celeron's version of like a dot patterned pressed leather so celeron often did either box calf they did gdp grain or they would do like a, a calf skin so like a a grained calf skin and gdp grain in the cape bag and the especially the envelope bag i think envelope bag only came in gdp grain now gdp grain leather is extremely durable guys it is comparable to chanel caviar but i would say it's almost a, it feels a little bit more like manufactured and not as like organic as chanel caviar chanel caviar leather at least the older chanel caviar leather has this like quite pleasing touch to it almost like it feels a little bit more I don't know how to explain it but I, I find that with Chanel bags from like batch to batch there is a difference in the grain of caviar um and sometimes it looks more lustrous and it just has a little bit more of like a unique finish whereas the the Celerot GDP grain it's very consistent throughout like the, every bag it's always the same and it looks a little bit like of a lower quality of leather almost to the Chanel caviar and I'm pretty sure it is like it feels very plasticky and very durable um although guys a lot of newer Chanel bags also have this very rigid and stiff plasticky feel which a lot of people don't like and say it feels a bit cheaper and I would say that the Celerot leather can be a little bit like that so the GDP grain um, yeah, it's very rigid. It's very structured. If you get it in the envelope, it's really going to last you guys. Like, it's going to be very hard to destroy. However, guys, if you get it in the card holder, so the envelope card holder with the GDP grain, after maybe like a year or so, this is going to start getting pretty sticky. And a lot of people don't talk about this, but if you, you know how sometimes you use a card holder for like literally years and you'll just like, you know, get it wet, put it anywhere. Um, I've tried out a lot of card holders over the years and my Loewe one is actually holding up really well. It's just this beautiful, smooth calf and Loewe leather is actually really nice quality. Um, same with Hermes, it's very nice quality leather and it should be because it's 
really expensive. Um, but the Celeron, I can tell it's a cheaper grade, like grade of leather because after uh, about a year or two of using that GDP grain leather, it starts getting very sticky and it's like there's like an underlayer or the, the coating that is on top of it is starting to break down and it's almost like a patent leather, you know, over many years. So this is a patent bag. Um, if I stored this in a really hot area or like, you know, in the sun, it's going to start getting, it even has a bit of a tacky feeling to be honest now, but it's not too bad. Um, this top layer will start breaking down and start getting like sticky to the point where you cannot actually repair it. And I found that the GDP grain, if you don't look after it, um, or if you put it in the hot sun, it can break down and get sticky. So I really think that if you like trash your cape bag or your envelope, it will develop that stickiness because it has this layer on top that eventually breaks down. So that's something to know about the, although they're durable, um, if you really use them, it will start to break down and you cannot repair it. It's like, if you take it into Celeron, we can do some repairs, but that stickiness is not repairable. That being said, guys, like the, the GDP grain compared to like Chanel caviar leather bags, is a lot more affordable and this is why Celeron is a lot more affordable than Chanel. A lot of people say, you know, they're going to boycott Chanel and buy Celeron bags. Um, unfortunately, guys, I'm a bit of a bag snob, but I'm going to tell you guys, Celeron quality is not the same as Chanel. The grade of leather is different, the finishes are different, the hardware is different, so it's, there's no comparison. There's a reason why Celeron is more affordable and I can see quite a substantial difference between the hardware, the leather, and the overall construction of many of their classic bags. Also guys, exclusivity. So I just want to touch on, um, I know I'm rambling a lot in this video guys, but a lot of you guys would have never experienced this, is that Celeron bags are really not rare. Like unless you get an exotic one, which they do do exotics. Uh, they're one of the, you know, the brands that still do exotics. Um, as you guys know, Chanel doesn't do exotic anymore. They they still do Python and Alligator and they're, they're, I would say they're probably the rare bags from Celeron, but things like the, as I said, the camera bag, the Sunset, the Kate, they are really mass produced, guys. Like if you go out the back room of Celeron, they'll have like 10 to 20 of the same style out the back. And I'm telling you guys this now, if you go into the back room of a Chanel boutique, they will have max maybe one spare of uh, the same style out the back, if not nothing. Like usually at Chanel, they'll have the floor pieces, maybe two floor pieces, and that's it. They don't have extra stock out the back, like a lot of you guys think. But sometimes they do, sometimes they'll have one spare, but Chanel, they'll have like max three of one style. Celeron, you have one style, they have like 20 out the back. So it's not as exclusive, it's a lot more mass produced. Not only that, guys, you can buy Celeron online, you can buy it on My Teresa, you can buy it on Farfetch, it, you can get it everywhere. And that definitely ruined, <laughs> that stopped me from being able to sell it because a lot of people would come into the store and try it on and then buy it online, which would piss me off. But I think that, you know, as time goes on, they're starting to kind of uh, maybe produce less and start, you know, taking their discount counts off websites and that sort of thing. I'm, I'm starting to see Celeron increase their price and, um, you know, kind of maybe lower their manufacturing as well. So it becomes a little bit more desirable. And this is what the brands do to keep their uh, relevance, basically. So yeah, Celeron bags aren't as rare as Chanel bags as well, which is why they're priced lower. So let's move on to the college bag. Now the college bag is made out of a really beautiful aged lambskin and it has a really beautiful finish. So uh, although it's lambskin, it has this real like durable uh, texture to it. I don't know, they've done something to the coating of it. And I actually love the college bag. Like the chain drop was a little bit long and the capacity is not amazing on it. Um, I think it's a really chic bag. For me, I'm also not a huge fan of the Cassandra logo, which is that YSL logo. I think it is a beautiful logo in itself, but it was never something that I really gravitated towards. I actually, for some reason, reason prefer this like little Celeron Paris logo. I don't know, for some reason, I think that looks very fancy, but the actual YSL logo, I was never a huge fan of, which is, ironic because I worked at Celeron. It does wear quite well as well. You will get the, you know, the corner wear and stuff, but overall that bag does hold up really well. 
Um, again, if you get it in the black hardware, you might have a bit of problem with the chipping. But yeah. Okay, guys, the Nikki bag. Now, the Nikki bag was something that I was highly considering buying because it looks like a really cool aged calfskin, you know, grab and go bag, really edgy. But there is a lot of design flaws with the Nikki bag that I'm going to go through with you guys. So, the magnet on the Nikki bag is extremely strong so strong that like when you rip it or, like open it it feels like you're gonna rip the bag and also when you're wearing it so when you wear the medium size if you put a lot of items in the sides of the flaps start flapping up like that and the magnet kind of like draws the whole weight of the bag down and it just looks bizarre like it doesn't it doesn't work basically like i feel like the nikki bag they didn't design it properly i think the leather is too thin to uh sustain the shape and then the magnet is too strong not only that guys but the logo at the front is like it's like coated in a uh, leather which actually takes like quite a lot of skill to do i think it takes them like an hour to just wrap that logo in leather we we're told that's like the most intricate part of the bag but the problem with that wrapped leather logo is that in no time the corners start tearing uh without you even wearing it much it just naturally the metal um kind of pokes through the leather and it starts um ripping through the the leather which you don't notice until you look up close but I found that that's a bit of a design flaw as well, and I did notice later on they were releasing more bags with, like, the non-leather logo, because maybe that was just, I don't know, I had a lot of people coming back, and then we had to, like, replace the logo for them, and yeah, it was just a bit messy. Um, it doesn't really age that well. It does become a pancake pretty fast. If you use it a lot, this does look really sad. Like, honestly, it is an aged car skin. Um, something like, you know, uh, two, you can't compare, it's a different price point, but something like this, you can kind of wear and it will, it will kind of get worn in and whatever, but it still somewhat looks good, but the Nikki bag, like, when you really, really wear it, it starts looking like a literal trash bag, and it just, it doesn't wear well, the logo gets all ripped up, and yeah, I don't know, guys, like, that was, <laughs> I liked the idea of it, but for me, just seeing the wear and tear of other people's Nikki bags, I decided not to get it. I think if I was going to get it, the baby size does less of that flapping up um, problem um, because it's a smaller bag, so it can kind of hold its shape a little bit more. But once you get into the bigger sizes, it just starts looking like crazy. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Next bag I'm going to talk about is the Lou Puffer. Now, this was like a bag that came out towards the end of my employment, but I it was a bag that I actually really liked because the lambskin on that bag is just so juicy, guys, and it honestly gave me a similar vibe to the Chanel 19, but I guess it was a little bit more of an affordable option. The other good thing about it comparing to the 19 is it has four grommets, so you can wear it on your shoulder, and it's actually a bag that I personally really love. Like, the Lou Puffer was something I was considering getting as well. I have noticed, though, because the lambskin is so buttery soft, it does get really bad corner wear quite fast, so it will start wearing down at the corners, which is not really that bad i mean you should just enjoy and use your bags but i will say like out of most cellular bags it's one of the good ones i i would probably recommend that bag it's it's feel you have to feel it guys like it's so soft and luxurious um it feels like really beautiful quality i feel like as years went by they were starting to realize problems they were having with their bags and this is a bag that they released that i think they've nailed it not all Celeron bags, like, actually, they, they always bring out these new styles and they often get discontinued, but I think this is one of these ones that are, like, probably here to stay, and it's been around for a few years now, so I think this is one you should probably get from Celeron, the Lou Puffer bag, um, even though it has that corner wear, but yeah, I don't know, guys. The, the lambskin is so nice, I think that almost outweighs the cons on that bag. Also, guys, I actually used to have uh, the Mini Lou. I've owned this twice, so I had a metallic silver one, and that was a really good, like, the Mini Lou, um, sorry, was it, no, sorry, the Toy Lulu, guys. I had the Toy Lulu in metallic silver, and this was a really good um, bag that I wore to Japan on my holiday. Yeah, I think the Toy Lulu is actually also one of my favorite bags from Celeron. It's a really good price point. 
it actually fits more than like a Chanel mini bag. It's got a really comfortable um, leather strap as well and it's just a very easy bag and I don't notice a lot of drastic wear and tear on that bag either. Um, yeah, the, the Toy Lulu is one of my faves. I've even had it in a shirling material. Yeah, Toy Lulu is cute. As, as terms of the bigger Lulu bags, I think they're also really nice bags. The Lulu is another good one I would recommend. It's a really durable calf skin. Um, they hold up quite well. They keep their puffiness. Hardware's pretty good, yeah. I never owned a bigger Lulu bag, but it was something I was considering. But I think at the time, because I had my heart set on saving up for a Chanel bag, um, I just didn't even consider getting it because, you know, bags add up, guys. And I forgot to mention the Sunset bag as well. That was a really popular style and comparable to the Kate, but it just had a little bit of a bigger capacity to it. Um, I personally don't love the Sunset either because I find it quite heavy and it's not that comfortable to wear. It's also very structured and boxy and I don't know guys, like it's just a bit clunky. So I, I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of the Sunset but in terms of durability, it's a very durable bag and um, yeah. Anyway, I don't know, it just wasn't my fave but yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice bag. If you like it guys, go for it but it's not the most comfortable to wear. I hope that video was helpful for you guys. I know I blabbed on for a while. I could go on for hours about Celeron, guys. But let me know if you would like more information about Celeron bags. I'd love to share it with you guys. And hope you enjoyed my video. And please like and subscribe to my channel. I would absolutely love it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.